Namaste everyone. I am Maithri Apuri, Zoology faculty from Infinity Learn. Here I bring another lecture from human reproduction. Before we begin, let us talk a little bit about our website infinitylearn.com. Please log on and you get an understanding of variety of courses that we have got to offer right now. You can see on the screen there is a repeaters batch that has started both for NEET as well as JEE. It has already started on the 29th as well the 29th is when the NEET repeater course has started and JEE which started even earlier which is 25th October. So our courses are up and running. Jaldi, 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 please subscribe and register. What's so good about it? There is 9.99 price only for the registration. And in case, just in case you do not want to continue, no questions asked, the amount is refunded. Who offers such a deal, guys? And if you continue, and I very much hope and definitely believe that most of you would continue, you get a bonus of that seat in premier medical colleges and of course the IITs. So just log on and look into these courses and there are a number of different uh, uh, you know the test series that is also available just in case you want to take these tests and 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 the nicest thing about it. In case you apply this coupon code MYTHILI40 you get 40% discount that's right you hear it right you get 40% discount it case you apply this coupon code. So we have an excellent set of faculty offering both of these courses. So make the best use of Infinity Learn platform. Here we are to make you the world class doctors and engineers. And just in case you want further more info about all these things because I definitely have gone a little speedened up in order to you know go ahead with my class. You can call this number 9019846666. Yes, please do call that number for a free counseling and get more and more info about this. So I hope you log on and you know register yourselves for these excellent excellent courses that are being offered. So let's get into our class today which is oogenesis. Remember we talked about spermatogenesis before from human reproduction. Here we are with another class where we are talking about oogenesis. Remember what gametogenesis is? It's about the production of the gametes. If it's sperm, we are referring it to the as spermatogenesis. If it's ovum, it's what is referred to as the oogenesis, right? So let's go ahead with an amazing fact. Only one follicle fully matures each month. Of millions and millions and millions of follicles that are being formed, you know, there are two million follicles uh, in the ovary by the time a female baby is born. But what happens every month? There's only one follicle that's fully maturing and it is the highest fertility rate in 24 hours where it is to be fertilized. That's why. All copulations do not lead to pregnancy, which is another important statement from NCRD text, which we are going to discuss detail in detail when it comes to the fertilization topic later point of time, right? So, what's oogenesis? To put it in very, very simple words, it's the process of formation of a mature female gamete. A mature female gamete, gamete is an ovum, right? So the process of the formation of this is what is referred to as oogenesis and you have that beautiful, beautiful picture redrawn from the NCRT text. Look at how that ovum is being released, right? That's uh, how the ovulation is taking place, the release of ovum is taking place from the ovary, right? So what's oogenesis? It's the process of formation of ovum, which is the female gamete, right? So in the oogenesis process, I did talk about there are 2 million follicles at birth, whopping, right? Where only 60,000 to 80,000 are left at puberty. Exactly your NCRT number, 60,000 to 80,000 of them are left by the time of puberty. So what is happening to all these millions of follicles where only thousands are left? 
of which there are 400 that will mature and ovulate during a woman's reproductive lifetime. Remember guys, the reproductive lifetime in females is from puberty, which is menarche to the menopause, which happens at about 50 years of age, right? And every month there is only one mature ovum, like I told you in that amazing fact. So how many would it be around 400 to 450, right? So what's happening to all these follicles? They are undergoing degeneration. They actually involute. And what is this particular degeneration referred to as? It's what is called as follicular atresia, right? They are called, the, the phenomenon is what is referred to as the follicular atresia. We exactly do not know the reason why this particular, uh, you know, degeneration is taking place. But it is something definitely useful for the female reproductive system. It's one uh, hypothesis is that there is a, a very high amounts of these estrogen that is released by the already grown follicle, which is suppressing, inhibiting the uh, release of the FSH, which in turn is affecting the other growing follicles, which is why they involute. You will know lots and lots and lots of these where you can register and learn and play these videos again and again when you register into those courses. So mightily 40 is your discount code just in case you are looking for a discount on those courses, right? So let's start with the primary follicle. We understand this general word primary, very simple, easy word, right? Primary basic so the primary follicle, what is a primary follicle? It is a, a ugonia starts division and enters into the prophase one of meiotic division and get temporarily arrested as a primary oocyte. So this is what is happening before birth. There is this primary follicle within which there is a primary oocyte, which would have started the division but is arrested at prophase one, right? So compared to the spermatogenesis, you will find there are more intricacies, details associated with the oogenesis, with the female reproductive system. Not to worry at all. It's all about, you know, paying a little more attention, uh, making that extra effort to understand the oogenesis. Then it is a cakewalk. I wouldn't say this is complicated uh, compared to the spermatogenesis and all. It is just that there are more details for you to understand, right? So pay a little more attention to oogenesis. Definitely, you will understand it just like the spermatogenesis process, right? Each primary oocyte then gets surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells. These granulosa cells are nothing but the cuboidal or the columnar cells that are surrounding a primary oocyte and it is what is called as a primary follicle. Like look at that beautiful picture that's drawn for you. There's a primary oocyte within and it is surrounded by these columnar cuboidal cells. Uh, these are the layer of the granulosa cells and what are we referring to it as? It is called the primary follicle, right? So the primary follicle is nothing but a primary oocyte that's surrounded by the granulosa cells. And primary oocyte is something that is formed even before the birth. It is arrested at prophase 1. By the time of birth, there are these millions of follicles in the female baby in its ovary already, right? And it would have these primary oocytes with an arrested prophase 1, right? So an important point to learn here and remember, when is the oogenesis starting? It's starting even before the birth of the female baby. And what did you learn about spermatogenesis in the previous class? It starts only during puberty, right? So spermatogenesis starts at puberty. Oogenesis is something that's starting even before the female baby is born as a 25-week-old fetus as a 25 week old fetus is when the oogenesis process starts in the female baby right so it is starting at uh, as early as that and by the time of the birth you know it is arrested at prophase until puberty actually nothing happens it kind of remains dormant again it continues 
from there again so you could say again that spermatogenesis is something that's a continuous process unlike the oogenesis which is a discontinuous process right so we have two differences already while learning this oogenesis it's very very important for you for us to compare and contrast because if you are a class 11 student board level question that's very very important comparing these two and if you are a repeater or completed your 12th it comes handy for your neat questions right in the neat also mcqs can be framed based on the comparison between the two so all in all very very helpful to understand these concepts whether it's boards or your neat examination right so a large number of these follicles are degenerating which we already learned what is that term again guys what is the degeneration referred to as it is what is referred to as the follicular atresia it is what is referred to as the atresia that's right therefore at puberty 60,000 to 80,000 follicles are only left the millions of follicles in the ovary by the time of birth is counted down to degenerated to or some of them involute to 60,000 to 80,000 right and then comes the secondary follicle so here is one more important thing that you need to pay attention to we are learning both folliculogenesis as well as the oogenesis so follicles are basically the oocyte within them with all the outer covers these granulosa cells all these put together we refer it to as the follicle so the on the external side the follicles are also undergoing changes internally the oocyte is also something that is undergoing a change right so you're going to learn both these together so that you understand all of this process in a very very nice manner right so primary follicle gets surrounded by more layers of granulosa cells and what is it called a theca and are called secondary follicles so what did we learn in primary follicle just now it's a primary oocyte which is surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells now there is a certain theca that is formed right you see that nice purple line around here right so there is a theca also that is formed now now what are we referring it to as secondary follicle we refer it to as the secondary follicle once after the theca has formed right so what is inside there is still primary oocyte in the internal side but externally the primary follicle has accumulated more and more granulosa cells around it there's one layer also that is formed referred to as theca right stromal cells would have formed now what is it called secondary follicle right so once after secondary follicle is formed it's further undergoing change to form what tertiary follicle it is further undergoing a change in order to form a tertiary follicle the secondary follicle soon transforms into tertiary which is characterized by a fluid filled cavity called antrum many a times previously asked question whether it is in your pmts or neat examination you will find this question what is that fluid filled cavity that's present in the tertiary follicle what is it referred to as antrum hello vibhati hello swagata nice to see some of you communicating chatting very nice hi hello everyone so there is a fluid filled cavity that is present within the tertiary follicle what is it referred to as it's called the antrum right these granulosa cells themselves are secreting a certain fluid which is what is referred to as the liquor folliculi right and that is what is forming this particular antrum fluid filled cavity is what is referred to as antrum many a times asked question so remember straight ncrt line it's characterized by this the theca layer is organized into theca interna and theca externa what else is new with the tertiary follicle there are more and more granulosa cells that are accumulating there's a fluid filled cavity that is formed which is called antrum the theca that we just talked about right in the secondary follicle is something that has differentiated into theca interna and theca externa right you understand these very simple words internal layer 
external layer which is what is referred to as the theca interna and theca externa. You also need to remember that theca interna is something which is highly vascularized unlike the theca externa wherever I say vascularized blood supply guys this is something that we did discuss in previous sessions as well understand the word and biology definitely is a cakewalk right understand the origin of the word understand some of these common words then there are certain definitions which you may not you know um, recall exactly during the examination but still you will be able to explain or write about that definition just because of the word that's the beauty of biology right so tertiary follicle overall more and more granulosa cells theca is differentiated into interna and externa fluid filled cavity what is it called again antrum right all these are the things you will find in tertiary follicle right the primary oocyte within the tertiary follicle grows in size and completes its first meiotic division so far it was a primary oocyte remember on the internal end we only talked about external changes folliculogenesis is what we concentrated upon now we come back to oogenesis within what's happening to the primary oocyte right it is something that is completing the meiotic division what did i tell you during the birth it's arrested at which phase prophase one right it is something that is arrested at prophase one and this is something that is um, you know completing it now it's an unequal division resulting in the formation of a large haploid secondary oocyte and a tiny polar body so it is an unequal division with a small polar body and a secondary oocyte formed why do you think there is this kind of a unequal division the reason being the sperm is a motile structure it bring, brings very little of cytoplasm along with it on the other hand the ovum is the non motile structure when fertilization happens it needs to provide nourishment to the growing zygote which is why it retains a lot of cytoplasm for that retention of the cytoplasm look at that beauty of the nature right that's why this unequal division of especially the cytokinesis the cytoplasmic division is something that's retained more with secondary oocyte compared to that small polar body which may or may not divide which eventually degenerates of course right so the secondary oocyte retains a bulk of the nutrient rich cytoplasm that's what i was just mentioning it needs to retain that cytoplasm to provide that nourishment for the growing zygote later point of time right and of course your ncrt picture that is retained there we are getting back to it again the secondary oocyte enters the second meiotic division but is arrested at metaphase 2 so previously at what phase was it arrested prophase 1 and now it's arrested at metaphase 2 it would have started its second meiotic division but yet again it wouldn't complete it but is arrested at metaphase 2 po first polar body may or may not divide here also uh, this is secondary oocyte we are talking about which is finally released when we say ovulation when we say ovum is released what stage is it in it's actually a secondary oocyte which is arrested at metaphase secondary oocyte which is arrested at the metaphase 2 so when is it actually complete only after the sperm entry and what if the sexual intercourse wouldn't take place what if the fertilization hasn't take place it would degenerate so this degeneration is something that's a continuous process that is taking place of the follicles throughout the women's fertile time period yes of course ncrt level at the basic level at your plus one plus two level you understand that you know from birth till puberty the degeneration takes place and it's called follicular atresia but understand this degeneration is a lifetime process that is taking place in the females right 
so the, the tertiary follicle further changes into the metaur follicle and finally finally we are here what did the tertiary follicle finally become it becomes a graphene follicle and what does this graphene follicle have it has inside it is a secondary oocyte it, it is what is called as the secondary oocyte and let us look at some more important terminology or the structure of it. There is a clear layer that is formed around this green colored one that is marked for you around the oocyte which is what is referred to as the zona pellucida, a clear non-cellular glycoproteinaceous layer which is what is referred to as the zona pellucida. Around the zona pellucida also you would see a several number of these cells which form what is called as the corona radiator. This is what is referred to as the corona radiator. You are asked that sequence of this final meteor ovum. Uh, uh, for example, a sperm is something that has to pass through which layers outside in the sequence. Then you need to understand this corona radiator outside, then comes the zona pellucida and then comes the plasma membrane of the oocyte which is ulemma. Right? It will help you answer that question where the sequence of the layers is understood. Right? So, this is how the final graphene follicle looks. The graphene follicle now ruptures to release the ovum and what is that process called? Very, very, very easy definition, ovulation, release of ovum. Graphene follicle is what is undergoing a rupture in order to give rise to ovum, of course. LH hormone is stimulating it. We will talk about hormonal control when we deal with the menstruation. That is why I am saving it for later. Unlike spermatogenesis where I taught you about hormonal control also in the same class. Right? So, what is a corpus luteum? Once after this particular graphene follicle has undergone a rupture, it would have released the ovum. What will happen to these remnants? Remnants may be a fancy term remains it just means remains what are the remains the granulosa cells that have accumulated all around it there are these theca layers that are around it what will happen to all these they would have formed what is called as corpus luteum again not a very fancy terminology as i said if you recall from the previous classes we have talked about corpus means body luteum lutein is the yellowish pigment that is present in these which is why it is referred to as a corpus luteum, yellowish body, a temporary endocrine gland which is secreting a very very important pregnancy hormone progesterone, right. So once this corpus luteum has done this job, it is waiting for this particular ovum to be fertilized or not fertilized. If at all it is fertilized, it is retained. If at all it is not fertilized by a sperm, okay, it is not fertilized by a sperm, then this further degenerates into a whitish body which is what is referred to as the corpus albicans, right? Corpus again means body. Albicans stands for white, right? Lutein for yellowish pigment, albicans for the white, right? So, post ovulatory events, I just explained this nice in a pictographic manner. You can see, so this is the ovum, it is fertilized by the sperm. So, what formed? There is this ooted and secondary polar body. Remember, it is arrested at metaphase 2. So, when is it complete? after the sperm entry it would have divided into a large ooted and again a small second polar body why the unequal division again just to retain that cytoplasm right if at all no fertilization this secondary oocyte also degenerates it is undergoing degeneration so here again you look at a very nice uh, you know uh, our input that has been put along with the NCRT given diagram, right? You can see that the during the fetal life there is lots and lots of these oogonia which undergo lot of mitotic divisions, right? Which forms the primary oocyte. That's what you will find in primary follicle, secondary follicle, and the tertiary follicle where it would complete its first meiotic division. Remember, it's arrested at prophase one. 
So it would form the secondary oocyte in the graphene follicle and it would finally finally complete its second meiotic division after the sperm would have entered into it. Again a nicely put together zest of whatever we have learned so far in this particular slide there. Very very important slide again you need to understand the differences between the spermatogenesis and oogenesis occurs in testis and ovary very easy you all know it by now right. It starts at puberty this starts at even before birth itself this continues till death this is something that ends at menopause about 50 years of age of course in men the sperm quality or quantity is something that may decrease with uh, aging but it definitely continues right it's a uh, all stages occur within testis all except last stage takes place in ovary remember it's waiting for the sperm entry to complete its last division and where does the sperm enter ampulla site of fertilization is ampulla a region a wider space of the fallopian tube not in the ovary right it's a continuous process it's a discontinuous process it produces motile gametes non-motile remember the reason again the cytoplasmic division that we talked about cytokinesis there comes the point is equal unequal four functional gametes are produced only one is produced that's why not much of a calculation is required whenever you are asked about 100 primary oocytes how many would it give an mcq for example 200 of these secondary oocytes whichever it is one is to one ratio right whichever 100 are given you write 100 ovum are released unlike the spermatogenesis remember there one primary spermatocyte would give rise to four spermatozoa one secondary spermatocyte would give rise to two spermatozoa right so spermatogenesis and oogenesis the pictographic one that's put together and here's a little quiz about what we discussed today egg is liberated from ovary in what stage what stage is it it's a secondary oocyte right what stage is it released it's a secondary oocyte oogenesis begins at is it menarche menopause parturition fetal stage again an easy answer if you have followed that lecture even before the birth of the female baby so it's what fetal stage right meiosis 2 is complete when right meiosis 2 is something that's again arrested at metaphase 2 it's only complete after the sperm enters right when does it complete when the sperm enters so true or false statement degeneration of follicles is termed follicular atresia do you think that's true or false that's absolutely true right so the regeneration of follicles what is it called it's called follicular atresia remnants of graphene follicle form remnants money remains remains of graphene follicle what do they form do they form corpus albicans corpus callosum corpus cavernosa it's the corpus luteum just now we talked about that temporary endocrine gland or the yellowish body corpus luteum is the one that's forming you can recall all others also it later degenerates into corpus albicans corpus callosum something that is connecting the cerebral hemispheres corpus cavernosa is something that you would come across recent lectures what is it's the spongy erectile tissue in the penis right so that's our class for today guys hope you enjoy do not do not forget to register yourselves for this beautiful courses that we got to offer if you are a dropper right tell your friends and family and do get that discount also with the coupon code mythili 40 mythili 40 the course has already begun and we have expert faculty teaching you these courses do not miss the chance this time at least in order to get into that premier medical college by the way we do have the je repeaters course as well so as usual keep learning keep rocking very happy learning at infinity learn learning is infinite and fun